Hello guys, I thought I'd give you all a little update on how I've been getting on with Solus 4.1. So it's been a few days now that I've been using it as my primary operating system. So in the first impressions video, I installed Solus onto my laptop and then set it up for general use for the coming days. The way I tend to review a distribution is in two stages. I'll always have a first impressions video up upon release, but I'll hold up on giving it sort of a further review until I've spent at least a few days with it in the real world. With Solus I've gone a step further and installed it onto my desktop computer which is where I actually do all of the work for the channel and everything else in between. I did this because I think the potential for me to use Solus as my daily driver is actually quite high. So if you haven't watched the first impressions video click up top somewhere and then come back to this one once you're finished. So I'm just going to start by briefly going over the changes I've made since I first uploaded the video and moved over to the desktop. I've removed the dock at the bottom of my screen and replaced it with a panel to the left. I've added the task icon list applet as well as the places and show desktop applet. I've also set this to always show as I have more screen real estate here than on my laptop. It's set to dynamic transparency so when an application is taking up the whole screen it turns the panel to a solid colour, which I find less distracting. At the top panel I've added a quick notes applet and a screenshot applet and left it pretty much the same as from the last video. This is all made super simple with Budgie's desktop settings application. Now I can achieve similar layouts on workflows and other desktop environments and distributions but it's often not as visually attractive or I have to download other packages that aren't included by default to get me there. The programs included out of the box are a good mix of software that work well together, and it's the same across their other desktop versions Solus provides, with the only exception being some difference in the media players that get installed by default. This means your office will be fulfilled by LibreOffice Suite and it uses Thunderbird as your email or client, as well as most of the other essentials needed to get you up and running. The only notable exception here was the lack of a torrent client installed out of the box. Which isn't really much of an issue as Software Center is quick and easy to use and will aid you in finding and installing any other programs you might need. I didn't have a problem finding most of the packages I used there. I did notice I couldn't find the Nemo file manager however, as I wanted to use that because I know it has support for global menus. For now I'll make do with Nautilus. You can also manage your updates here in the Software Center or alternatively you could do this by the command line. This brings me on to the command line package manager. Before these videos I hadn't really used EOPKG in the terminal at all. Despite that, getting to know the basics needed to manage my packages wasn't a problem whatsoever. It wasn't long before these commands became embedded in my muscle memory and I was using the command line to install most of my applications, like I would on distributions I have much more experience with. Performance wise I have absolutely zero complaints. It starts up insanely fast and has minimal bloat included weighing it down. I've been playing some games on Steam and Luchas without running into any bugs or hiccups and it's among only a few distributions that gets my personal seal of improvement to play CSGO. You might be thinking I'm a bit crazy as it doesn't take much to run that game at a reasonable level. However, with some distributions in my personal experience, something doesn't feel quite right. It's like there's a very slight jerk that's not always there but it makes everything feel a little bit less smooth. Now that's completely anecdotal and just something I've noticed on my particular hardware setups but with Solus it's buttery smooth. Creating and editing videos and images has also been a breeze though I personally think the inclusion of some tools to do this out of the box would really seal the deal. In the comment section of the last video a viewer mentioned he noticed some screen tearing and wanted to know how I would fix it. Unfortunately or fortunately depending on how you look at it Solus 4.1 has been tear free for me by default. I test this by using a combination of different video tests and also just my own user experience while playing games or consuming media. I've gone over the video and I think the point being referred to is here. I think what is happening there is a combination of Firefox and OBS just not playing well with each other for whatever reason because I've failed to reproduce the same tear on the same website since that video. Now I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. For me an operating system or distribution has to be fun to use but also get out of your way when you need to get some work done. I think Solus does this in spectacular fashion, in particular the budgie version. So Solus offers three other alternative editions on their website which are Mate, Plasma and Gnome, which I also briefly tested during my time with Solus, all very polished and capable releases, but it's their flagship budgie desktop that really does tempt me away from my current distribution. What's not to like? Installation is quick and painless, it's moderately light on system resources without compromising on its look and feel, it's easy to use and it's all wrapped up in a stable yet rolling release. That's been Solus 4.1. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.